Hi. Okay. Hi, everybody. This is the future, everybody, because there is no everybody right now. Right now, there's nobody. I'm speaking to people of the future. As I paint some masks. I ain't gonna lie, kind of a low key energy day for me. Lots of rain uh, here in Texas. Howdy. Yes, we are tired of rain, my wife says. My wife is reading comments for me. You guys might want to see what I'm doing. I may be low energy. I also might be low brain cells. <laughs> see how it goes. Stay tuned. Something really stupid might happen. Be contained. Uh, Jordan says, I sent you a picture of a ghost I made. Did you get to see it? I did. I saw your sheet ghost. I like it. I like it. That's a, that is the sheet ghost that you like. You did it good. All sheet. The all sheet ghost channel. All sheet ghosts all the time. Hi, Alan White. Cheney, Boris, and Bella. <laughs> Indeed. Um, I have given Cheney and Bella some scrap EVA foam over here. Bella here? Yes. Cheney? Yep. That uh, they are doing their best to tear up. Looks like a lot of Magneto helmets back there. Well, they're Magneto helmets right now, but they're going to be apocalypse masks when they grow up. Precision tools for detail painting, one inch chip brush. You know how I operate. Paint a mask. I mean, I'm painting a mask the same way I always paint a mask. This time you're watching. Don't make it creepy. Okay? Uh, no, no, I did not. Is this one? Is it one you sculpted or one you purchased? Now those pups must love the foam. They do. Anything they can bite right now, which is everything I'm learning. They can bite everything. All the things can fit in their mouth. Ross Riker. Ross from Middle Tennessee. We got hit by a tornado. Luckily, my part didn't get hit, but a quarter of a mile from me got hit really bad. Please keep my city in your thoughts. I will. That really sucks. We get hit by tornadoes a lot here in Texas. <laughs> um, they're actually kind of rare that far east. Yeah, east. I just had to do my never eat soggy watermelon thing in the air. Uh, normally, they're uh, they got. Us and Kansas and Oklahoma written all over them. I love apocalypse. Kill it, bad guy. Good evening from Southern Indiana. Uh, good evening. Jordan would like to know what Pee Wee fan. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Scott Scott Blowhart said he sculpted. Do you mean Pee Wee Herman? Uh, not especially. Did you hear uh, Scott sculpted? Oh, that's awesome. Uh, send me a picture. Scott, do you have my email? Apostles for Chad Smith. Jordan Bootsy, do you think you'll ever recreate the old jumping stilt werewolf costume? Oh my gosh, dude, that was so many years ago. 
Uh, that was like 2002, 2003. Um, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, I like my Moving Jaw Werewolf mask that I have now. Um, I like that more than, uh, than that Werewolf mask from that time. And, uh, yeah, that's possible. Okay. Jordan says I've got an old copy of the mask. Oh. Yeah, the costume was pretty simple. It was just a, uh, you know, it was the covers from the uh, knees down. that cover the stilts, you know, with the feet on them. And, uh... It had if I recall it was a the first shirt with a chest piece. Yeah, I actually have a chest piece. You know what? I'll paint a chest piece tonight. I have one over there that I've already based out. When Jerry I say that Collins. I already based it out, I mean Stan based it out. Jerry Pollock says, Hi, Alan and wife. I'm in Iowa. Hello, Jerry. Uh, Ross Riker said, oh my god, a P.B. Herman monster would be so hilarious. Oh no. Look what we've done. <laughs> Jordan says, can you show them what I made? What? This goes. Picture? Uh, I can't. I don't have, I mean, we're on my phone, and I looked at it on my computer because you sent it to me through email. I'm sorry, I cannot. Say hello to Ezekiel. I don't have a computer here. Hello, Ezekiel. We're going to miss you at Trans World. We will miss you at Trans World. How are we supposed to have sugar fire? We, we enjoy seeing your face. I'll have two servings of sugar fire just to make up for your slack. All right. Can't tell, but I just dry brush that. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to dry brush it again with a lighter gray. Would like to order a werewolf, a wolf man, and pick it up at transport. A silver wolf man? Yeah, I'll find See, that's the hard part because. Or should I, should, you know, do that? Well, I, I guess we could pre sell it. I, you know, I, I don't know. Sure. What makes it hard to track? Yeah, we just gotta, you know, it's gonna get there with someone's name on it. It's not very sportsmanlike. Okay, now you'll see something start happening. Because now I have a color on here that is light enough to show up. Uh, that base I put on there was a, a real dark, a darker gray. There's very little of this light gray on my brush. to this and just start bringing it up. And what will start happening? No. Yep. No. Not for dogs. Sorry. They're getting into my box of stuff here that I'm looking into. Bella. No. No. Have to watch them every second. I left it as long as I could to make a decision. I'm super bummed I can't make it. MHC is the goal. Of course, Texas in the Halloween season. You know, and I respect that. I think it's the airplane ride is going to... is. that he makes his office. Yeah, the airplane ride is, is the bummer. You know, um, that, that's what makes it sketchy. Because you're in a tube, you're breathing the same air that other people are breathing. I get it. I hate flying. I'm a fatty. I barely fit in the seat. Not comfortable. Yeah, I have failed you, Alan. I will not have a new mask for you to critique at Transworld this year. Ran out of latex. You got two weeks? Get on it. <laughs> everybody everybody <laughs> sells latex. I know ships. Jordan says, I made that ghost with cotton fabric scraps and a plastic skeleton. How would you have done it? Uh, probably the same way. I probably would have used a little of a thinner fabric. 
in order to be able to get more wrinkles into it. Um, and I would have dipped that fabric in a latex and water mixture so that it stuck really good to the, uh, so it stuck real good. Cobwebs and Candlesticks says, I've been working on forever pumpkin stems. I'm pretty happy with that. Awesome. How are you making those? And we have two Jordan zones. So i got to remember that. If they're talking about sheet ghosts, I know which one it is. Well, it is. It's not Jordan. It's not Jordan Ezel. I'll say it for me. Okay. All right, so we're getting there. We're, we're graying up this wolf mirror. Warren says, hello, hops and flutes. <laughs> hello, Warren. Cowboys and Candlestick says, pipe cleaners and fiberglass resin. Cool. Wouldn't mind seeing some pictures of those. My puppies are all around here just trying to find something to get in trouble. This is Bella. I don't know what she's doing under there. She's trying to find something to tear up. Come here. What are you doing? Trying desperately. Chaney is eating his way into a box of clay. He pulled down that white fur. And now he's eating a cardboard box of clay. Did you get any scrap fur to chew on? I don't really have much scrap fur right now. I'm not in a scrap fur mode. Have you used... Alexa, stop. Have you used permagore on a mask? I'm not. Ezekiel says, I tell you that Cheney is a handsome dude. The others too, I know I'm not supposed to have favorites. Yeah, you know what? It's actually easy to to favor Cheney a little bit because he's the odd one. The other two are black and white and he's brown and white, so he kind of stands out a little bit. Um but they all, you know what, they all have their attitudes and they all have their own personalities. It, it's remarkable seeing that develop. When I brought them home, they were, I, I call them fuzz sausages, because they were just, just saw, all puppies are sausages, you know, in the sausage shape. Um, and, you know, now, now they're, you know, I, I can tell you, when, if something, if Shannon tells me that something bad was done, I have a pretty good idea which puppy it was, <laughs> just because of, you know, their behavior and how, how that works. Is that a vampire? No, this will be a werewolf. He just doesn't have hair. Uh, my wife posted on the Still Beast Facebook channel um, a silver, were, silver werewolf, she called it, I think. Wolfman. Silver Wolfman. Um, and that's my black and white look man mask. I'm just going through, I'm putting a little bit of color here. I know that's all going to be covered up with hair, so I'm not too worried about it. This guy, I think, is going to go, um, yeah, this is a different Wolfman. This will have a little more color on it. He won't straight be black and white. I'm loving this classic series of your masks. Uh, dude, I'm going to have, I'm doing so many things that are classic, like black and white. And then they're, they're all, there's, I'll have several black and white stilt costumes and some black and white ground characters. So, I mean, I, I hate that you're missing it. Because I know you would love it. Ironically, werewolves are allergic to silver. That is true. They are allergic to silver. Uh, so this guy, uh, I, he, gets, he gets some color. But I am going to leave him with a gray skin tone. But uh, you know how I put magenta under the eyes and whatnot. 
on most of my masks. Some of you know that. I have no idea. We could have new people tonight. Who knows? I don't want to make assumptions. I have to get something out of the fridge. What that timer was. Here's Graham from the UK. Say hello. Hey, Graham. This is the mold. Really can't tell. Chad Smith. Is that I bat? Love that you are bringing back the classic monsters. As many mask vendors that are at Transworld, you rarely see any classics. Um, that's because I don't. I don't think it's it's uh, safe. Classics aren't safe. Yes, they're classics, but they're not safe to do. Clowns are safe to do. Zombies are safe to do. I'm not anything, you know, super amazing, but I tend to take risks. Um, now, is, is a Frankenstein mask a risk? I don't know. Sometimes it is. Um, I'm trying to sell to haunted houses. Do you think people are afraid of Frankenstein? What about Nosferatu? What about um, the Gill Man? What about a Wolf Man? You know, these are very classic creatures. I'm asking haunted houses to scare their customers with the same monsters that scared their grandparents. Um, every time that I make a monster for a haunt, I'm asking the haunted house to scare their customers with it. And by looking at it that way, that's how I kind of justify some of my choices sometimes. Has fungus ever grown on molds? Absolutely. It's mold that grows on molds, ironically enough. Are you guys bringing the means of doing airbrush makeup at Transworld by chance? No, we're not. Uh, this year I don't have any airbrush makeup classes. Have you told them what your classes are? Uh, I would have to look them up. Uh, most of my classes are actor related right now like uh, this year. You? Sure. Maximizing your Q is Thursday. Yes, Q line acting. I get to do a class on Q line acting. I'm thrilled about that, in all honesty. After training round table is Friday. Uh, that's with me, um, John LaFlamboy, and Ben Armstrong. And I am uh, thrilled about that. Anytime I work with those guys and teach, I learn stuff. <laughs> you see me taking notes every time I'm not talking. Six classic sets in 60 minutes. Oh, yeah. Saturday. Talked about bringing back classics. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to run through some sets that I have done in haunts over the years that I was taught about that were, and when I say set, what, what I mean is rooms and scares and, um, you know, just classic stuff that works because it works. Okay, I like the color on that. That's kind of nice. I want to punch up this with a little bit of white. I'm going to put a little bit of flesh in there. I'm going to warm it up a little bit. Says, I call Frankenstein monsters Prometheans. Uh, that's fair. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, because, of course, it was called Frankenstein, the new Prometheus. Just like Prometheus brought fire to uh, mortals, um, Dr. Frankenstein brought life again, second time. And, uh, the monster's original name was Adam. That's kind of fun. But when I say Frankenstein, most of the time I'm referring to the monster. Chad Smith, speaking of acting, will you be doing any training near the central Illinois area at other haunts? Honey, will I? I don't think I'm going near Illinois no, this year. You'll be in Illinois in June for MHC. Are you doing uh, any training? I don't know what I'm teaching yet at MHC, so I'll be uh, at MHC, which is in Chicago. And if you're doing actor training there, 
Uh, it's possible there'll be an actor training class there. We are not scheduled to be back in Illinois after any uh, That would make a great gargoyle mask, too. Everybody says that when it's gray. Ed Roberts says hello. Hey, Ed Roberts. Good to see you on. See, now, now I'm not... I'm not being a structure. I'm just bringing in some patchy flesh. With this brush. It's got paint on it. I should not, I should not post pictures. What's going on over there? Um... Chaney is whining because he cannot get into this box of clay. Oh, okay. And no one's helping him. He would like help in destroying my shop. I say nay nay. All right, so now he's got a more fleshy. I like that. It's not just straight gray. There's a little bit of color in there. But it won't look out of place with gray fur. I'm going to add some white to my new color really lighter. I'm going to dry brush it. <clears throat> I can make masks with wood cheese. That's how I use separate pieces together. That's true. Um, I would use contact cement because they're latex. You could just use latex and la to latex. Um, a lot of guys used to just throw a pantyhose over their head and then apply the wuchi when you peel it off, it's a mask. So, maybe along those lines? I don't know! Yeah, just these blocks of color are kind of nice. Make me happy. And I'm going to shade with the airbrush, of course. But uh, that, that feels good for now. Get the black. Hit his nose. Q is on. Hey, Q. Hey, Q. Q with dark out. Yeah. I don't know any other Q. She was now on the actor managing team at Dark Hour. And uh, I don't know when the first year he and I worked together was. It was over 10 years ago, I know. Back when I was at Screams Halloween Park. So that looks like gray now, but that's going to turn black as it dries. Q says, this year will mark our 14th season together. Wow. <laughs> Ross says, yeah, you do. Curious TUV. I don't know what that is. Chad Smith, I'm thinking of selling on Etsy. Curious, what holes do you see in the market of masks besides classic monsters? Um, well, in all honesty, I, I'm not sure yet. Um, but I, I, I'm, I, I look for a hole, then I work on it, and then I move on. Um, the apocalypse masks that I make, I, I started making those because I think the industry needed it. Um, and I think there's still a lot to ride with that. Um, but I also think that we're going to kind of see a, an uptick in like twisted flesh type stuff like uh, The Thing when you think about the, the movie monster in The Thing I think that style is uh, going to come back and there was a space video game that was kind of the same um, and uh, Lovecraft is going to be on a big upswing I feel, I feel there's going to be a lot of Lovecraft stuff. So, eyes and tentacles, man. Eyes and tentacles.
Bella, no. Thank you. What's she doing? You put that bowl over there and she's trying to get it. Bella, no. Thank you. That time she was trying to chew on a dragon wing. Good afternoon to you both. Watching while working on my latest creation. Glad to catch another bipolar bushman. What are you working on, bipolar? Or do you prefer Bushman? Psycho Axeman, still able? Yes, I have not been able to get a hold of Psycho Axeman. Nor see him online. That's one of several packages I have over here that I have to mail out. So, wife, I am going to need glasses for my phone. For your phone? Why don't you just uh, make your phone bigger? What's that now? Did you say for your phone? Yeah. I think you can make your font bigger. Just just pick a bigger font? Well, I think you can. I can do it on mine. We'll try and see. When I thread the... Do, uh, do you need glasses at other times besides your phone? If I want to read pretty much anything, I need glasses. Oh, you're going to be so cute. That's very hard for me because oh. I've never worn glasses my whole life. You're going to be adorable. And I rely on my eyes for a lot. They're still there. Are they failing you? Are you They're trying? failing me. I am there. They're causing me anger. <laughs> okay. I started reading Lovecraft. Lovecraft, it's some trippy stuff, said Chess. It is, man. It's some very trippy stuff. Jordan says, am I looking at helmets behind you? You are looking at helmets. Uh, that's what I base my apocalypse masks on. This is the fourth year I've done apocalypse masks like this, I think. Um, where it's an EDA foam helmet, and then I add a bunch of stuff to it. So there's a couple videos of me making those on the YouTubes. All right, I'm going to set this mask aside. I, I don't know that it's done, but it's done enough for now. Let's take a look at it. Bipolar Bushman is making a new deck fairy sculpture. And Scott, Scott Colhart sent us an email with the things he's making. Oh, that's so awesome. Ezekiel says, you'll be amazed how much better glasses can be. I resisted them too. Oh, my gosh. I'm a visual artist. You know, I have to rely on my eyes. My money. You get your appointment to an ophthalmologist. We have them, and we have a good program for insurance. Just to see how much you need. I wear glasses too. People say I look like Harry Potter. That's Jordan. Jordan Bunsey. Jordan, I hope I said that right. Do you have a favorite YouTube Wednesday video you made? What a great question. Boy. What a great question. So, How do you answer that? the irresponsible part of me says, you know, the tentacle video, um, because it's just, it's just, the whole time I was filming it, I had no idea that it looked so terrible and phallic, and then I, I, while I'm editing, I'm like, oh my god, can I even air this? You know, who knew it was going to get the end of the table and the tentacles, like, move, it looked very phallic. Uh, so, but it's funny. You watch my tentacle video. It has its moments. Um, I, I really love videos in the style of my blood on the cheek video, where I I have a theory and I test that theory and I use a lot of different things. Uh, I like that style of video very much. Sorry, I was working on something else. All right, uh, next mask. I'm actually not going to use this stand that's already on a head form, and it's a sock mask. And it's gotta be black and white. 
my pillow bushman says 49 here and just started wearing glasses for my art. It sucks. Never needed them before. Yeah, it does suck. Um, but I'm now I have like this magnification thing I wear in my head when I sew, so I can see the thread and the needle. Thank you. Be cute. Jordan Bunsey says that half a video was one of the best. Jordan Easel says also I haven't found snowman video. I tried. Maybe a reload is, or re-upload is in order. Uh, no, it's there. I mean, I I, I do. I have so many freaking videos. Scott Colhart just posted the tentacle video. Oh, oh, we don't talk about the tentacle video. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jordan Bunsey says, I love the video you, you make making the giant scarecrow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hollow Wednesday, I think it was, I called it. Lemur on wheels. Okay, lemur on wheels. <laughs> what lemur on wheels say? Your wonderful wife should stop being so shy at the camera and say hi on screen every once in a while. That's the thing, man. I, I, it's like, uh, what was the TV show Tool Time? Tool Time, no, it was my, Home Improvement. Home Improvement. Yeah. My, my wife is Wilson. Yeah. She's just that voice. You never see her all the way. That's the trick. You want to you wanna meet my wife? you got to come to a trade show. No, I come to Monster Camp. Oh, I come to Monster Camp. Yeah, I'll cook for you. I love the night you were testing iron grip against other adhesives. Hey, Michael Lasseter. Man, that was so exciting. Michael, are you exhibiting at the show this year? Let's see, Jordan says tentacles. Men are here. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. Ezekiel says better off meeting her in person. Ezekiel, you're the best, man. You got to get back here. I need you to come to a monster camp, but Jordan Bunsey. Uh, going to watch the typical video. <laughs> oh, Scott, you're so rotten to do that. That's funny. <laughs> Dry brush. I gotta get the paint off my brush some. Never start in the middle of the face like I'm doing. Always start like on the back of the head or something so that you don't have the issue. You know, what if your brush is too hot, it's loaded too much? But I've been dry brushing other masks, so I kind of felt good about it. This is a sock mask that I did, um, obviously, uh, and I will be pulling it off of the sock once it's dry. Well, uh, yeah, I am. Ezekiel says, next year my son can join me at Transworld, which will make travel so much easier, and he loves this Halloween stuff almost as much as I do. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. Michael Astor says, I wish I was more regular work schedule with all that. Right now, maybe time to find another job. Gotcha. Yeah, quit that. No. Oh, maybe my wife says no. Andrew. Sometimes I get bad, give bad life advice. Andrew, gosh, I hope I'm saying this right. Edian Siri. Gosh, I, I'm sure I said your last name wrong. Apologize. It says hello. I'm a big fan. Oh, hi. It's Andrew. Hello. Good, good to hear from you, Andrew. So I'm just getting a base layer on. Lots of things will happen here shortly. Jordan says you are a wise soul. I don't know about that. <laughs> Certainly a soul. It's like my haunted house career, I was a wild and crazy dangerous actor. Two years later I somehow am haunt Yoda and I don't know how or when that happened. Linked. My carefree days are over. Well, maybe not. <laughs> carefree is a strong word. Since you are down to earth and nice. Uh, I try to be. I want to be approachable. Um, when I when I started haunting. 
Um, there were people, there were haunt people that you would read about in the, the haunted house magazines. And there was no internet. Um, they, you know, you'd read about people in the haunted house magazines, and it was your Larry Kirchner's and John Denley's and um, Ricky Dick was on there a lot. And I, I, a Leonard Pickle, you know, I've gotten to meet a lot of those guys. And mostly they're pretty nice. Uh, there's some turds. Um, it's not important who they are, but you know they, they have a different attitude and philosophy than I do. But I, I want I want to be approachable. I don't think I'm a I don't think myself as a punk celebrity, but I know I'm in a weird spot because of the internet. No How much for a sculpting bust at Transport? Uh, sadly, I won't have any. Um, all the ones I have are kind of promised. Who was that? Chad Smith. Chad, uh, let me see what I can do. I got one sitting in a box over here to go out. Um, and um, that's got to go. And I might have one or one. Like, it's going to be, you have to ask for it. It will not be out on display. Okay, Chad? And half mask bust, right? Or a whole mask bust? Which one? Ezekiel says, font yoga. I like it. Andrew says, the mask is awesome. Bill Batchelor, in a hotel room in North Carolina. Bored out of my mind. And then my favorite live stream comes on. Hooray. Well, awesome. Glad, glad to hear that. Glad Jordan I could... says, other than costumes, what are your hobbies? Uh, the only hobby I have other than haunting, um, which is work, is uh, fishing. Uh, I like to go fishing. I especially like to go fishing for alligator gar and other fish where there's a small chance they would eat me. What about sword fight? Uh, oh, I also, I sword fight. Um, axes. I like to do that. I have an axe throwing target in the backyard. I hope uh, this year to set up an archery target in the backyard. You also are going to start a new hobby. Uh, I want to start forging. I want to forge and make um, tomahawks. I like axes. I have an axe collection. Uh, weapon axes, not tool axes. And I, the dog wrangler, <laughs> Ezekiel says. Yes, well, that's, yeah, too. Do you lark? Uh, I do not lark. I just don't have time. I mean, it looks fun. It looks it looks like a great time. It combines, you know, monsters and, and uh, sword fighting some. So I ought to freaking love it. And I love the concept of it, but I don't have time. Um, I'm, I am in the shop quite a bit. The only thing I watch on TV, you know, happens on the shop TV. Chad Smith says, okay, I will ask, but first I half ask. Yeah, ask. And if I have time to get one, get one for you, I will. Uh, Bill Bachelor, does this mask have a name or a theme? Yeah, this is the Grave Digger. Um, and it's, it's just an old man. You can kind of see that. Uh, it's an old man <laughs> mask, basically. Um, but it's going to... It gets a top hat and it gets hair, and it's it's one of my favorite pieces I made a few years back. And it looks a little bit distorted because it's on a uh, head, um, the sock mask on a head form. I airbrush this guy. I think that's going to make him really kind of come to life. And I hope to have an actor in this at Trans World. Uh, I'm going to be... I have more suits I want actors in this year than I've ever had before. Um, and I'm so happy with my Hunchback, guys. I did... We did some tests last night of the Hunchback. And he was walking around. And it's that moment where I've had a monster in my head. And now he's out here walking. And that's just a beautiful time for me, you know.
I'm always happy and proud when that happens. Now I'm lying. I'm lying with paint. I'm putting in the, the you know, the head here. But I am painting where a highlight would be. I'm letting mm -hmm. it kind of just fall mostly into the shadow. So it's not drawing attention to itself. I'm going to hit under these eyes. This is a black and white themed mask, so it's not going to be a... It's not going to have color on it. It'll feel like you're looking at a black and white picture of painting. Andrew says, I know it's going to turn out good. Jordan, what kind of monster am I? I'm called a sobbing flame. Based on the name, what kind of monster am I? A sobbing flame. Bill Bachelor says it looks great. Chad says, I like your work, but something but something about this mask. I really dig it. No pun intended. Ezekiel says, the headstock, is it a liker type? That's the headstock. Is it a liker type? Yes, it is. Now, lycra has pretty small pores. So, um, I tend to attach it with contact cement, not latex. There's another type that is textured cloth. I prefer those simply because they uh, it holds the latex better. Oh, sorry. Will of the Wisp. I think you would be a Will of the Wisp. Is that for Jordan? Yes, or possibly a Lydurk. Um, uh, Kirk Matai says, Jordan, what kind of monster am I? I'm called a sobbing flame. Uh, that's because it's bald and it's a deformed face. Michael Berryman. Yes, I, I, I see it. And I know why you see it. The spray sock ones are great. The cream colored ones, I can buy them at the right price too. Yeah, the spray socks I really like. Uh, I use those quite a bit. Um, this year I do have a lot of uh, the spandex ones that I'm using. I see Freddie on that mask from the side view. Uh, you, you, you will a little bit. Um, Freddy is a great sculpt. I mean, it's a, it's kind of a universal monster point, and the nose is Freddy Krueger on purpose. I wanted this nice Roman nose on this guy. The Bachelor says, morning something. Is he morning? Like, in morning. Uh, Black Amigo. Wow, amazing detail. I love your work. Well, thank you. Jordan says the answer was actually a burning ghost to endure his great pain. Well, does, Ross, does that burning ghost have a, a name? What what culture is that? Ross Riker says, I think sobbing flame sounds like one of Satan's lackeys. Uh, Lisa Ardent. Any transfer predictions, major themes for Halloween this year? Great question. Um, yes. I think you're going to see a lot of underwater stuff. Uh, I just I just, I just, just think underwater stuff is coming. It's about to hit. Um, I, I just, I, I see that as being one of the next things that we kind of latch on to for a little while. Um, underwater, I think we'll need a little more Lovecraft. I think we'll peel away from clowns a little bit. Kirk Mattia. Not all the way, but a this little. This will be available to buy. Absolutely. Jordan says it's from a ghost story. 
Jordan Bunsey says, I'm back. Sure enjoyed watching you thrash your tentacle back and forth. I need smoke now. Yeah, that's that's how it goes. <laughs> Lisa Arden, Jules Verne, awesome. Yeah, I think you're going to see some of that. I, I think that uh, steampunk kind of came and went and never really put its foot in the haunted houses. You've got some apocalypse stuff and some diesel punk that uh, is kind of making its way into haunts. Uh, apocalypse is still on the way up, I think. Um, and it, so you'll see more more diesel punk, more rust, more masks that are, you know, almost like helmets, Mad Max type stuff. I think you'll see some of that. You, sir. Yes, sir. You hit that in the spot. Great mask. We'll be looking to purchase. We'll be looking at purchases. Transport. That's very huge. Cool. Well, what do you see with the top hat and everything? I mean, this is. I, I really like how this guy turns out. Does he have the ascot? Yeah, still have an ascot. I mean, he's got a whole suit. I mean, the, I will have a whole grave digger costume. Jordan says the lady gets set ablaze and she dies after getting hit by a train. Okay, now did you make this up, up or what? What is this from? Is that, a, is, that, is that a movie? I see a tiny. I see tiny for Rob Zombie films. A little bit of that. Sure. I see that. Tiny firefly. Chad okay. says, peel away from the clouds, we can only hope. <laughs> yeah. And Jordan Bunsey says, perfect Jack the Ripper. Yeah, top hat and all that, I think so. Ezekiel says, grave diggers and top hats are my faves. I know. You'll you'll like this guy. Does it look kind of ghastly? Okay, I'm real close to just writing this guy off and saying, okay, you're good till you get shading uh, with the airbrush. I'm going to wait till he's dry to peel him off of here. But I'll peel him off before I airbrush him. Let's move him out of the way. Move, mask, get out the way! Jordan says, no, I didn't make it up, and he forgot the title. Well. Michael Laster, you can take a lot of masks and put a twist on them, and then turn them into another creature. He had hair and whiskers and made a rat creature. Yeah. I was thinking about a rat creature with my Nosferatu. Bill Batchelor says, your dogs sound like a cat. Well, there's also a cat. Do you do much silicone mask work, Alan? If so, how do you deal with it in your shop? Or you're also doing latex, giving it a cure inhibitor. That is from Jake. I do some, okay? I do some, um, but I don't do a ton. In the other room, there is a mold and a head form, and they are in a plastic bag, and they're all taped up, because that's the last silicone mask mold that I made. So, yes, I do some, but... Uh, I have to be very careful. You're absolutely right. Um, and frankly, I'm nowhere near as good at silicone masks as guys like Immortal and stuff are. So I uh, I let them do it. You know, they're so good. <laughs> let them do it. Greyhouse Haunt says, stupid YouTube, I didn't get a notification. Man, we hate the YouTube. <laughs> Titanium works. Oh my lord, how many helmet bases do you have? Uh, 50. So I can take 50 masks to Trans World. Now you're going to see some grade A winging it from Mr. Hops.
this is complex and hard to explain. Andrew Freeman's sculptures are disgustingly good. It makes me sick. And yeah, he makes me angry. <laughs> this is this is a lot to explain, so I'm just gonna just move this guy on by. Yeah, the apocalypse masks, yes. Yes, uh, those are definitely always post-apocalyptic. Mr. Jimmy FXC says hello. Hey, Mr. Jimmy. And uh, Mr. Jimmy, uh, he's actually taken up that torch too, and he's starting some very apocalyptic looking stuff. Um, very uh, aviatory. And what, one of the things that I love to do is I love to, I'll start a line or something, and I want other people to pick up that torch and run with it, you know? Um, I have the kind of personality where I'm not happy making the same thing kind of over and over. I love wolfmen and werewolves, but if you told me that's all I could make, I'd be very frustrated. Uh, so, you know, there, there's going to be a bunch of other stuff in there. And... When, when I started doing apocalypse masks, no one was doing anything like it. Uh, and I'm glad to see a couple other people picking it up, because that means in a few years, when that niche is filled, I can move on. I don't have to make them anymore. I make them because I feel I need to. Jordan says, my name is What am I? Google? B-O-O-G-L-E. Oh, well, you're a boggle. Um, it's a boogeyman. It's a goblin. That is a old English word for a boggle. When do you think monsters started hiding under beds? That's Jordan. Um, as soon as the, a kid was on an elevated bed. I mean, the human mind, it's our job to put monsters, to, to fill dark places with monsters. That's what our brain does. Why do you think on maps, years and years and years ago, they would draw monsters into the areas of the map where they had never been? Our job is to fill the world with monsters. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Mr. Jimmy says we carried a lot of apocalyptic masks last year also. Yeah. Titanium works. What about doing some fancy medieval helmets? Uh, I did a few of those last year, actually. I had I had knights. Um, I had a, a couple of them. Just when you're doing apocalypse masks, you know, it's so easy to make a couple of them into night masks. And that's what I like to do. Um, I don't do mine, my apocalypse mask kind of all the same. I make them all different. Is that Gilman a mask? Yes, yes it is. Uh, it's a hemet. You are an absolute inspiration for me. Thank you for that. That's Rango 24 months. Well, that's very nice. Titanium works. I've been doing post-apocalypse for a while. I have no idea how I haven't seen your stuff. Are you familiar? <laughs> No. Jordan says, I call my ghost the, the Death Shroud. Uh, cool. That's a nice name. Now, this is not at all painted, mind you. And it's not all finished. But yes, it's a mess. Have you ever used body double light to make 
material. Yes. I need multiple lower legs, and I'm thinking of using them. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's good for uh, for casting. It's fast. My God, I love that gill man set, cobwebs and candlesticks. Yeah, kind of a straight up fish man. Did you study SPFX? And if so, where? Uh, I was mostly self-taught. When, when I started, um, there was just not a lot of options as far as where to learn. I did look into like cinema makeup effects school. I looked to uh, the Joe Blasco Makeup Center, but mostly I uh, I just bought materials and did it. If you're going to spend, um, you know, four or five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars on an education to learn. Um, then how much would you learn if you bought $10,000 worth of materials and just made stuff? I think sometimes you'd learn more, especially if you wanted to, to be in one field. How did you get involved with Dark Hour? Uh, right place, right time. Um, I was working for a company. Dark Hour had just gone through a art director they lost, lost their art director. I was working for a company um, who was here in Dallas that wanted to open up a show here. And they were a touch, let's just say, mercurial, where they did not want to do the same thing for very long. And they ended up buying a haunted house in Orlando and moving there and doing that. Um, but when they did that, right before they did that, they were they were hired to consult, and I did a lot of that consulting for what Dark Hour is now. Wow, that fish is pretty sick. When were latex masks first created? Um. I think the 40s was kind of the first latex masks. Um, Don Post was really the big originator um, 50s and 60s as far as mass market being able to sell them. Michael Astor said he believed in the 1930s. Yeah. Ringo says, have you ever heard about the College of Makeup Art and Design in Toronto? I'm planning on I have heard of it. I don't know anything one way or the other about it. Any tips or pitfalls with using the body double material? Uh, just uh, do, do a hand first and get used to it. It has a cure time and, and it tells you that the stuff that's touching the skin, because the skin heats it up, will make it accelerate and kick faster. gills to my gill man. And these are gonna go around kind of the uh, the head. Did you laser cut those parts on the gill man or all hand cut? Uh, the fin and the face spines on the side, those are laser cut. I do a lot of laser cutting for my apocalypse masks, and uh, one of the things I want to invest in next is a big laser cutter. I just have so many plans that and things that I can do when I get a big laser cutter. This is too thick. How do you manage this business? I have this discolula, this Discosula. I'm not sure. So go easy on the math. Sorry, Jordan, I don't want to say that. How do you manage this business? Um, boy, um, 
Get a wife. Get a wife. That's and then, then you make your wife manage the business and you <laughs> just stay in here and make stuff. Pro tip right there, guys. That's not the answer. Good answer. Jordan may be too young for a wife. Good answer, good answer, good answer. I'm a fan of your work and your live videos are awesome. That's a Vinny5150. Well, thank you, Vinny. Have you I'm a fan of people of named Vinny. Have been more of a director at once or have you ever owned and operated? Yes, I've done that. And a lot of times if you're owning and operating, then you are directing as well. Uh, those are not mutually exclusive. Jordan is 19. Yeah. <laughs> start a business, then you want to get a wife. I'm just saying. Can you foam fill a Gilman mask head to put on a spear? Uh, of course you can. You can foam fill anything. Ezekiel says, top shelf answer, our wives are the backbone of our business. Heck yeah. Rango 24 masks. One of my biggest fears is to dedicate my whole time to this art and fail completely. Do you have any advice you want to give to a newbie like me? I've been making masks for four years. Uh, how old are you? I, I have been asking people one question lately, and it's the most enlightening question I have, um, that my unprofoundness has thought of. And that, that question, I'll just go ahead and say it. The question is, Look back at your life right now. When was the happiest time of your life? And that follow-up question is, was it when you had the most money? Or did money not have anything to do with it? It's 27. Yeah, so look back. Even at 27. We're not looking back that far, but look back was the happiest time in your life when you had the most money. And if that answer is no, then maybe um, you need to define for yourself what does fail miserably mean. Do you mean you're making no money or, or not much money? Is that failing miserably to you? Well, then make art. Find a way. That's what that book's about. That book is called Big Magic. Uh, do you own a laser cutter or do you have access to a maker space or something? Yes, I have a small laser cutter right now. It's got a bed size of 17 by 21. No, 12 by 21. It's not a big. It's not a big laser cutter. I want to buy one that does 35 by 24. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is Jordan. How foxy can a fox be? Jordan, you ask questions like I have time to answer them, my friend. Um, what what are you talking about? How foxy can a enough foxy enough? I don't, I don't know. I don't, what do you want from me? I don't know. I talk about she goes every time you want to. I feel like that's, you know, a lot of the time. But I don't complain. She goes are cool. Cobwebs and Candlesticks says, look, you guys, I have to do all the work for my business. Get a wife or a husband. I don't discriminate. Ty Moss says, oh, look, here we go. Hi Moss, I've noticed the recent switch to pledge for a release. For a lot of people, what's the magic property I'm missing out on? Well, um, here's the kicker. I'm pretty sure that they changed the formula to Crystal Clear. Crystal Clear never used to bond to plaster molds, and then it started bonding to plaster molds every now and then. And I think they just changed the formula. It's not like it's food, but they have to tell you what's in it. As long as it does the same job, it's the same product. It doesn't matter what's in it to them. 
but to us, it matters what's in it. So I started looking for an alternative um, a few years back, and I liked Pledge. And now a lot of people like Pledge. Jen Smith says, wow, Shannon, I hope you have broad shoulders for all that responsibility. She do. She's good. I'm going to pile it on. <laughs> Ezekiel says, my son has been seeing a sports psychologist. 10,000 hours to get good at something. 30,000 hours to get extraordinary. And Smith, Rango, so, do, so you do it and you think you fail. What has happened? You've been creating stuff and having fun. You are young enough to bounce back from any failures. Yeah, I mean... Rango says, thank you very much, man. I, I don't think they're going to uh, have a problem. You know, it's, it's do it. Just start doing it. Penny, how do I get started watching your videos is when you... How I got started is watching your videos is when you did the Krampus mask for Halloween. Yeah. Ezekiel says, go hard at it, Rango. Yeah, you, you just have to start. Just jump in. And you can do it on the side for a little while. Here's a quote that somebody posted that I love. It might have been Ezekiel. Um, nine, to five pay, um, nine to five pays the bills. And then six to midnight builds the empire. Nine to five pays the bills. Six to midnight builds the empire. When the empire is built, then you step away from that nine to five. What brand laser or is it an Imforge? Uh, it is a Glowforge. Yeah, it's just, um, for me, I used to use just Crystal Clear, and that ended up um, fusing to uh, some molds. And then you got to, you know, wash the mold out with uh, some mineral spirits or acetone or something to, to get that out of there. And that's, what an extra step and a waste of time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Just finished re-listening to the Code Yellow episode you were on. To a what? Louder, honey? I just finished re-listening to the Code Yellow you were on. Oh. Very excited for Trans World and just catching you on live stream. Oh, well, cool. Yeah, Code Yellow, it's a, it's a, that's a good podcast. I'm glad those guys are doing it. Um, you know, it, it's... What we do is an art form, so... You know, there is occasionally yelling at the screen, be like, oh my God, what, you do it that way? It's an art. It's not a science, it's an art. Everybody's going to do it a little bit different in their own way. So maybe I don't do things exactly the same way that they do, and we certainly go into things with different philosophies. But uh, the outcome is the same. We scare people. And that's what makes me very happy. Yes, paralysis by analysis. Yeah. Do you know the price point on your fossil yet? Uh, possums are probably going to be thirty dollars, which is not a lot. Yeah, 
titanium works, it wouldn't spray evenly. And when I went to apply plaster, the surface was still very slick. Did you, uh, molded, how long did you wait? I molded two masks with it and it didn't care much for it. How long did you wait before you molded? I always give it 30 minutes. Ketsmith. I think the 6 to midnight is what rejuices you to be able to deal with the 9 to 5. Don't put the pressure on the money making side of the creative stuff and it will build up. Just do it. Cobwebs and candlesticks. Oh man, show the possum. <laughs> well right now the possum is uh, attached to something else. And it's one of the possums. Um, Titanium works. About Here's 15 a, minutes between each coat and 30 minutes after the final coat. Yeah, that's about what I do. That's a dead possum. And he's being held by the hunchback in his hand here. Will you be on an episode of Potter's Hangout this season? Only if they ask me. They have not asked me. Like, I know they like to line up their guests in advance, but also I'm kind of I'm a sure thing. They say yes, I'll do it. And uh, I like Nicolas Cage. I'll do any movie you throw at me. Um, but you know, I, I enjoy being on. I enjoy talking to people. And they probably know I'm a sure thing. If they have a cancellation or whatever, they might ask me. But right now, no, I don't have anything scheduled with them. The most raddest possible. Awesome but also, um, a lot of Haunters Hangout is about exposing their audience to new people. I'm not a new people. Uh, I'm already pretty exposed. You know, if you want to find Alan Hops, you can find Alan Hops. I'm pretty easy to find. So, yeah. I'm not sure what went wrong, but I'll try to get on my next sculpt that isn't a commission. Yeah, I, I like it. Uh, I think it, it works very well for me. I'm going to do two more of those gills and cover a little more of the head. What I'm doing is I've got just this raw helmet back here. And I put these two gill plates on to make the gill man a little more gilly. Possibly made me think about the lip mice video you made. I'm not sure why. Because he's gray and fuzzy. Like mice. Ezekiel says, if I can find you, anyone can. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty easy to find. Uh, too easy sometimes. Chad Smith, I'm pretty confident I will pick up a possum. I do, have, I do a hospital theme at my haunt. Wife asked, why a possum? Why not is my response. Well... Yeah. Sometimes you just want a possum. Don't stand between a man and his possum. Why was there so much negative to do a flat cat? It's Ezekiel. Um, people like cats. And I think that, uh, well... Stacy is my wonderful, young, progressive, liberal, sensitive, idealist friend. Um, and no matter how old and crotchy you are, keep those kind of people around you. And also, surround yourself with smart people who don't agree with you. My ideas are challenged all the time. And I like that because it makes me either double down on them and make sure that they're the right thing to do, it's the right course, or it makes me question it. Stacy didn't like the black cat? Stacy, I wanted him to be holding a dead cat. And the only reason I wanted him holding a dead cat is because I have never gotten the written description of Boo Radley out of Boo Radley from To Kill a Mockingbird out of my mind when 
it describes him, and the first kids describe they call him like a cat murderer. So, um, I was a good reader, but I wasn't a good, like, written report kind of guy. So I would always do all kinds of things for extra credit. And I drew a picture of Boo Radley. And I had a dead cat hanging out of his pocket. Because, you know, they describe him as a cat murderer, and that kind of stuck with me. You know, what kind of a jerk murders cats? Um, I forget why I was talking about that. You were talking, the question was, how, why was there so much negative about a black oh. cat, and you were talking about Stacy being I think, progressive? I think people like cats, you know, and she was like, I think you're going to get some flashback or some blowback from, you know, portraying a dead cat. And I don't necessarily know that she was right. I think if there's any trade show in the country where you can say, hey, guys, look at my dead cat. It's, it's trans world. Uh, maybe only, you know, only seconded acceptance to MHC. I think they, they would love dead cats at MHC. So, yeah. It's funny watching all the YouTube videos when they say Alec. They don't say hawks or beast. Yeah, we all know who they mean. That cracks me up. You are like Madonna or Elvis of YouTube. Well, that's that's very kind. Uh, I got into the Haunted House YouTube game very early. Very Random. early. Random. But have you noticed any difference between the old Colonel Blood formula and the new 2019 Waterproof formula? I found there's a big color difference. I wasn't sure it was just my batch. I think the color actually changes from the back. Um, it's pretty close, but it's always kind of fluctuated a little bit. Um, but no, I don't buy permablood. I, I make my own stuff most of the time. Um, permablood is a wonderful product. I just like to mix my own. Blood may be superior in every way. I just like to mix my own. See, now there's three fins back there, just adding a little bit of detail. Add the third one mm -hmm. here. Okay. I think Scare Products has been dead cats last year. What's that now? I think Scare Products had dead cats last year. Uh, yeah, there was one year they did a lot of dead cat stuff, I think. I don't really think anything less of it. They're saying flat cat over the Batman theme. The daughter thinks it's hilarious. Sick kids. That's hmm. Ezekiel. Da -da 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 the flat cat. Like that. <laughs> Let's do some plates. Just like there's this area here. Let's do a couple of plates. He said exactly like that. What I'm doing right now is while I'm working on this mask, I'm thinking. And I'm doing the math. How much extra time is this taking? Um, 
And like I did those gills, it's the first time I've done them. So I, I left, I cut an extra one and that's my pattern. And then I'll scan this and I'll put this in the laser cutter to cut this next time. Do you still use the clear blue blood recipe? I do, a lot of the time, I do. It's a, just a good recipe. Um, they can be if they're not built right. Uh, you got to keep them away from your face. Um, and I work a lot of venting into mine. Lots of air holes, lots of just venting. I just noticed your shirt. Where did you get that? It was it was made for me. Stacy made that. Did Stacy make that? You know what? I told four people today who made this for me. And right now, it was a Christmas present. And right now, I, I cannot remember. Joshua Cardona. Thanks, homie. Uh, Josh is a very talented actor at Dark Hour Haunted House. Okay, I need three of these. Let's turn to the six of the, I need 12 of these guys per gill man. So I love that gill man, the new bomb spear, cobwebs and pegs. So I assume you're the one who asked about the gill man head on the spear. Mm -hmm. Wait till you see it painted. It's going to be fun. Again, I'm going to do a black and white one and I'm going to do a color one. Hey, honey, can you come tell a story real quick? I hear something. First, let's see the cuteness that is our puppies asleep, because that's pretty dear. <sighs> let's see. Goodness, he always pulls this on me, and I've got stories, and I try to not have any more stories that have anything to do with, with uh, embarrassing situations, but there's just so many of them that I, that I don't, <laughs> don't know. Okay, um, and this is embarrassing, so he put me on the spot, so this is what he's going to get. Uh, Alan and I used to work at Scarborough Renaissance Festival in Waxahachie, Texas, and we were performers there. And we had a great time there, and there was, uh, it's a Saturday and Sunday that it's open. Saturday, while he was English wrestling, he, uh, he ripped his pants. These are his costume pants. He just ripped the crotch right out of them. You shouldn't have left me. And then, uh, you know, he brings, we bring our costumes home. I throw them in the washer. Everybody falls over and the next day then you know we get up and you know we put on the costumes again and mm -hmm. uh, I did not know that he had ripped the crotch out and he hadn't told me so he puts the pants right back on they're clean I didn't check the crotch there's I just didn't and our, I moved the camera are you still on I'm on okay uh, and uh, so we get to start getting dressed Sunday morning and he realizes that the hole in his crotch has gotten considerably larger and is pretty much unraveling. So he leans back on the back of his truck bed. As, uh, because he's a haunter, he has spray paint with him at all times, and he finds a can of black spray paint. Brown spray paint. Sorry. That brown paint. Brown spray paint. And uh, he asks a friend to come over. He leans back. He spreads his legs wide and says, spray my crotch. 
Spray paint my crotch. And the guy goes, our friend goes, goes, I can't. He says, no, spray paint my crotch. No one will ever know I have a hole in it. Now, everybody's rolling laughing. If the underwear underneath is brown and the pants are brown, you wouldn't really know there's a hole there. So you're going to have spray painted crotch for up to 15 hours in the hot Texas weather. Not like my crotch crotch. There was underwear. But but, but still, you're going to paint flesh, delicate flesh. no, and, it's and, not flesh. I'm just painting the, the cloth over the flesh. It's still going to get the inside of your legs. I think it was a good solution. It was a terrible solution, and so I stopped that, and I forget what somebody sewed it up real fast, did a whip stitch or something. Thank you. But I, I was horrified to walk by and see my husband with uh, his legs up in the air and everything pronounced and then just, you know, Way asking someone to spray paint his. I was kind crotch. of yelling at them because they were not moving at a speed, and which was pleasing to me. Guys, this is my life. It, it's every day something, every day, and I have a saying, and it is Mrs. Hops is not, it's not no being Mrs. Hops is not for sissies, and it's true. And I'm gonna part with yet another picture of these exceedingly cute puppies who are sound asleep because they're tired. And now we're gonna go back. How's my camera angle? Great. Good. Yeah. All right. Back to you, Alan. Do you have a hole in your pants? Not right now. Great. But if I did, I would hope that you would be kind enough to spray paint it for me. This is my life. There it goes. 10, 11, 12, I do one more. This stays be my pattern. Ezekiel says, I bet them undies were well worn too. Duluth Trading Company. You should see if Duluth has an affiliate program. Think about how often I get asked about my suspenders. I'm making the Mad Benjamins. And that popped into my mind because that's my underwear of preference, is Duluth Trading Company. <laughs> the fish man was made at Texas Honors Convention. Um, <laughs> maybe. Who said that? Then in I may have sculpted it there. I always sculpt at my booth. Because the puppies are getting so big. Indeed, they are. Oh, bless the candlestick says, and that's how the world met Carl's water buffalo. The water buffalo. We want the water buffalo oh, together. Oh, this is getting some good reaction. Cat Swift. Sorry for this basic question. I am a terrain builder, not a mask maker. What type of for the foam, uh, a weld wood contact cement. It's just regular old contact cement. Cheap stuff, not even barge. Everybody recommends barge, and I just don't like barge as much as I like contact cement. Pattern pieces there. And this foam, I can cut it with the razor blade, but it's also thin enough I can just cut it with scissors. Let's do that. It's all about how you choose to give yourself carpal tunnel. I'm going to cut all these out before I start gluing them on. Because I'm pretty sure it will work. Chad says, I think this story surpasses the late night food truck story. That must have been the Trepentis. Oh, Trepentis. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. So good. So good. Scale. Fish scale. Fish scale. Fish scale spinning around. This is a fish. Let's see where I found. Stacy Hawkins says, Laurent, saw a Oh, did you come in the door? Yeah. It's been a lot of Uh Stacy messaged me a couple times, and I saw it pop up on my phone, but I could not see her message. If it was important, then uh, message Shannon, and she can help you, or make sure that I help you. 
The other day I cut part of my knuckle off with scissors and it didn't even bleed. <laughs> Who is that? Cobwebs. You make four choices. I like it. Yeah, used to be I could do whatever I wanted in my shop. But now, I can't use the scissors called fabric only for anything with fabric. Which they get. I'm building up a pile. Yeah, um, yeah, I like me some deep sea anglerfish. They're one of the scariest sea creatures to me. That and goblin sharks, frilled sharks, viper fish, another good one. You're just watching the guy cut stuff out of foam. These are old wise scissors. I've had them for over 29 years. Wow. Stacy says, and thank you for keeping the fabric only rule sacred. I I know what it's like. Chad says, I'm curious, and I hope this doesn't sound creepy, but does it ever bother you that so many people know as much about you from your videos and feel they know you as a person? You don't know them. That would bug the crap out. So here's the kicker with that, all right? Um, does it bother me? Not especially. But it does get weird because people who I don't know, and, you know, I am in their living room, you know, a couple times a week sometimes. And I don't really know who they are. But, you know, I'm, this is me. Like, this isn't, I don't put on a personality for the camera. I don't, I'm, you know, it's, I would, I'm not going to work hard enough to be that fake of a person, you know? So this is me. So you do get to know me if you watch enough of the YouTube channel. Um, I, don't, I would like to think I don't treat people any differently on camera than I do off camera. If I really need to yell at Rob, I, I turn the camera off. Other than that. That's not for me, that's for Rob, by the way. Rob does all right. I guess I've kept him around for a couple of years, I can't complain. I realize I may yell at Rob too much, but he's my frequent shop help. Because every now and then people will come who we don't know. And we'll, we'll come to my booth, they'll say, is Rob around? I want to see you yell at Rob. <laughs> That's terrible. It happens. Yeah, but he gets presents for that. He does get presents. For people, people are starting to bring him presents. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give him cookies, guys. No sweets. Do you shop thrift stores for materials to upcycle in your props? No. Okay, okay. Props, yes. Um, here, here's why I said no right away. I am a seller. I am a vendor. So I'm going to sell things to haunted houses. And I'm going to take my items to Transworld. And I'm going to have one of just about everything that I sell. And they can place orders to order more. If I made it out of something that I got at a thrift store then I can't play, take orders on it because I can't guarantee that I can get another one. And certainly not at that uh, price point. So when you do that, if you're doing it as a business, your business is gonna just stay small because that business model cannot be scaled up.
Does that make sense? All right, I now have 12 of these uh, head scales cut out. So I should have sent personal props. Yes, I, we do that all the time. Uh, costumes, that kind of stuff, yes. Um, I have a monster museum at Scarborough Fair, and most of that monster museum is built from uh, items that I got secondhand or at rubbish sales or whatever. Alan, is there a place where we can share our art with you? Just curious. You may have said it before, but I'm absent-minded. Um, uh, sure. Um, you can post it to the Little Beast Studios Facebook page, or you can... Um, when this video is posted, go back to that video or any one of my old YouTube videos. And um, I think you can now put images or at least links on in YouTube comments. Chet Smith says, no, you are very approachable. You're the same person. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate that. Ezekiel, probably even cooler off camera the time you have for people and advice. Sweet. Bye, um, Cooler Bushman. Cool, thank you. Would like to share as you do with us. Love to see it. What I'm doing is on six of these, I'm cutting a bevel because this, this foam has a thickness. It's a five millimeter thick foam. And when I glue this down, I want this, uh, I want it to seamlessly kind of go into the mask. So I'm doing it with a bevel on the front edge for six of them. That'll make that a little less noticeable. first and I have to do the second course first SPFX says I like that sequence why thank you twisted wing on a house Alan what do you recommend to get a true blood or rich red when painting a latex mask my reds turn more pink when adding reds to the latex faces take this twisted wing uh, um well, um, are you are you talking about latex paint? Are you talking about? Can you read that one more time, honey? The first part. What do you recommend to get a true blood or rich red when painting latex masks? My reds turn more pink when adding reds to the latex faces. Um. Add a drop of blue in there, and that'll a that'll darken it up a little bit, but also um, uh, it'll darken it a little bit. But also, I think it, it makes it looks a little more arterial, a little richer. So, I like to do that. And you can also one second add another pigment into your pinkish paint. Uh, to make it a little richer. Um, I find food coloring works very well because it has some degree of translucency to it. It's actually a very good um, additive to paint for latex masks. Uh, sometimes, like the house paint, the red looks pink until it dries. So I will let it go, let it dry, and then... Um, Then I'll do another layer with, uh, and I'll add 
to it, I'll add a little bit of food coloring to it. Same stuff, just with a bumped up color. But I don't, I don't do blood as paint normally. I do blood as an add-on after. So it's not paint. It's I painted the mask and then I add blood to it. It's a finishing step more than anything else. Blessed to work with some cool peeps. Are you worried about a material supply drought with the Asian suppliers? No, I'm not. Um, it's possible. Then I'll make something else. Or I'll make it work. Stacy says gel food color or the liquid food color? The uh, liquid food coloring is what I use. I don't normally use things that are edible because if you do, sometimes things want to eat it. So I beveled that a little bit and it's less obvious. Now I just have, you know, just some more scales happening in here. I like that. Now that's a finished side of the head more than the other side was. You want a lesson in impatience? It's me. I'm going to black this side out. Ezekiel says, supply is starting to diminish here for some reason. Australians have gone crazy. I'm noticing postage is very slow from China. However, I am in Australia. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean it's going to change some things, but I think it's mostly a freak out. Uh, I, I'm not good at chicken little the world is going to I just don't see it. My world's not going to end. Maybe I have to resort to cannibalism to live. I'm cool with it. Probably shouldn't have said that. Sometimes you can feel better by imagining the worst possible situation. And you don't have money for food, you know, what do you, what do, you do? Find some eat. So thank you so much, you're a big fan. What blood do you add to it? Uh, to the food coloring? what I use is I use my Elmer's glue. I use the blue gel Elmer's glue and I put food coloring in that for color. I have a whole video on blood called Blood on the Cheap where I give several recipes for how I make blood and what they're good for.
I'm gonna move you guys. I don't know, so you can see what I'm doing. Eh, not really. They're tough puppies. And it's it's quite possible that you know something awesome would come out of something like that because you know you don't you don't innovate unless you have a reason to and not being able to get your normal material might force you to try something you wouldn't normally try which might lead you to a whole new product line or something you know different. See how these scales stick up a little bit? And I'm trying to look, make this one look like it tucks right into that, even though it's just glued on top. this side I think. So I was learning Aiden as I was going. Just so all of this is homogenous or homogeneous, depending upon how you actually say that word. I'm gonna give this all a little bit of a coating of Flex Seal. I love this uh, Flex Seal stuff, because when I spray it, you can tell it also gives a little bit of a texture. See that texture on there? That's straight out of the can. hit like the teeth and stuff. I don't want texture on the teeth. But that's a helmet. It's finished. I have a pattern to work on the next ones. So I got graveyard, uh, grave digger most of the way painted. I got the wolfman painted. Yeah. Not a huge night, but good for a couple hours. Um, I was kind of wondering how I was going to get him built out. It's a half mask, I'm turning into a whole head. I think that's a worthy way to do it. Um, each one of these is a different costume, by the way, all these boxes. So if I look in here, try to find the creature, like here's Grave Digger's box. And right now in the Grave Digger's box, 
spats. He's gonna look fancy. And I'm looking for the creature. Black and white. Do you think a whole suit made with that yoga mat phone technique would work? Uh, it will. It does. Uh, people make Iron Man suits out of it all the time. It's, it's a huge material for cosplay. See that pattern? Oh, I love that. This is one of my underpieces for the Gill Man. So they're wearing this shirt. So this hood goes on, and then they put on the helmet. So the whole face is open, and this covers a little bit of the back of the head that is open, and the transition from the back of the neck down to the body. But it has this nice pattern on it. It's I fishy. Use the same blood you taught me to make with blue. I just didn't know you could use it on a mask. Sure. How do you deal it so it stays forever? Uh, let it dry. Uh, I have also started playing with Gorilla Glue Crystal Clear caulking because that dries really firm with a little bit of stretch, but it sticks really well. And uh, it's the most clear stuff out there. So if you can add a color agent to it, um, with probably an oil paint would work very well for that. You're going to get a lot of the properties that you want out of that mask. Out of that substance, I should say. All right, so I'm not going to dry all this tonight. I'm just going to let it dry. I'll turn the fans on when I leave. Uh, have you guys seen the hunchback over there? Can I just show you guys the hunchback a little bit? This is, of course, not the whole costume, but this is part of the hunchback. Don't worry, that was just a heat gun. Uh, let me show you this because um, I think it's fun. I think it's fun. Uh, I have to go to the hunchback here. He needs his arm. I'm going to plug his arm in. Uh, the arm separates just so that the, it's easy to maneuver and stuff. And, you know, the shirt's not distressed. It's not 100%. But, uh... I can tell how it's going to be, and I'm happy. on things and I might I'm, I'm terrible I might have a product idea like week of show and then try and bust it out okay uh, I won't have his belt on but that's okay I need to grab his paint I want to show you guys what I have on the hunchback. You'll have to forgive me because I won't be able to see very well. Well, I can see fine, but I can't see down in the shop. Uh, no, I'm just getting some things together. I am going to put this on, love, and I'm going to back up to you and I'm going to go throw my back clothes, okay? And then hand me that glove. You can wait right there for a moment. It's Velcro, so it's easy on and off of the form. You can get in there. 
putting it on is easy. Back up to you, wife. And I want you to go for the back for me. Be right back, guys. I'm getting Velcroed in. holding a possum and uh, so that is why he's not doing much with this arm aside from swinging around the dead possum <laughs> I'm gonna punch your lights out uh, my arms are short don't worry about it okay yeah okay <laughs> And ordinarily, I would just uh, unvelcro the back and slide out. But yeah, what do you think? I haven't seen a lot of full-scale puppets. Do I scare the dogs? see a lot of puppets on that scale at Trans World and uh, that makes me happy. So, yeah. Well, um, hang on a second. I'm going to go see if there's any comments on the Hunchback. Stacy. Yeah, so I may end up, uh, I'll probably have a version with a uh, servo eye. Um, the eye forms that I use, I still have, so, but yeah. Um, Anyway, I'm going to say good night. Good night. And as I always end, uh, go make stuff.